Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, and hey, hello, happy um, Monday. Yes, it's a new week, and with a new week, we have new price action, actually significantly more new price action, which I am very happy about. Finally, I'm sure you, like me, have been getting very bored of this last like week of essentially looking at the same thing. So as always, I want to be wishing you the best of the best. As you can see, my eyes are a little bit glazed over. I didn't get enough sleep last night, and also this light is like really fucking bright, man. Uh, let's get into live scene right over here. We got plenty to talk about, and uh, Bitcoin taking a big leg up on the daily, testing the green 55 exponential on the daily, which is also where the monthly uh, 55 is as well. And we'll get to that in a second. But I want to spend the majority of this early video or a big focus on a video like this is going to be the lower time frames, the four hour dildo time frame right here. And we have a four hour dildo golden cross confirmed for the first time in a long time, perhaps I think a little bit over half year, which we're going to we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into. But that is the green 55 and the purple 200. And the reason why this is such a big deal to me is that, you know, for from for myself, I'm first and foremost, probably most comfortable with trading just off exponential. So that's what I've spent the most time learning. That's what I've spent the most time, you know, actually having experience with. And, um, and, and and this is giving great insight to what the Boston Algos do, do, are, are doing. And I want to just quickly say that after looking at the Discord for a little bit, um, waking up in the early morning hours, uh, man, I can't stress how important it is to not get caught in the bear or bull gang. Both gangs end up into the only gang that actually truly exists, and that's the fucking broke gang. Understand that if you, you know, when I see something like this, I'm happy to switch my my short-term bias to bullish. It has to be variable. I'm not beholden to, you know, to to what price action was doing over here when we didn't necessarily have that. Now we have new information, now we have new price action, and this does mean something to me. So understand that it is okay to change your mind, it is okay to change your position, but change your fucking position when you change your mind. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's like, what's the fucking point? Um, I just noticed a lot of people getting like very wrapped up in uh, like like myself as well. I don't want to, I don't want to separate myself. I do have this issue as well. It was, you know, it was worse when I first started, but really, when it gets down and dirty into it, when you have new price action going on, if it meets your criteria for switching, you know, your your short term outlook, your medium term outlook, whatever it might be, know what those triggers are, but switch your fucking outlook when it happens. So for me, this was my short term outlook right here. Once we got this, this is, you know, now we have something new going on as far as I'm concerned in the uh, in the lower time frames. Now, let me just show you what's happened in the last few times that we've actually gotten the golden cross on the four hour delta time frame. By the way, also, it's important to show what happens when it gets averted at the last second, like it did right here. You did not get a confirmed cross. We actually do have a confirmed cross right now as of the last four hour deal to close. Um, and then, uh, and then obviously, you know, that one was averted and then big, big red deal uh, going, going to the downside. This, another, another example of it getting averted. And then that was, you know, basically your break of 6,000. Another example, uh, kind of right here. And then, then we get to the actual last example of when we had a real confirmed golden cross in the four hour. Now, this was obviously a bull trap, um, but this was all the way back in uh, late August, early September. So I believe that's about half a year. And even on this very weak one, this was a pretty damn weak one, just from top to bottom, or sorry, bottom to top, I suppose, about an 8 to 9% move, an 8 to 9% move off that. Not uh, not bad at all. Um, and the one before that, the last confirmed one before that was in July, July of last year, 2018. And this one was quite a significant one. This one was this one was a phenomenal bull trap, 25% uh, up, twenty you know, 25 to 30 Thirty percent up, damn good for a four-hour golden, uh, four-hour dollar golden cross. The one before that was right over here, and that another pretty damn good move as well. If we just even take it, like just completely hindsight trading it, and a actually kind of similar price action here, where you know you spend a, you sp we spent a long time going sideways at this level, just tiring everyone out. And again, what do we have here? About a twenty percent move. Um, and then the time before that was right over here in March on this double top. Uh, hunt as well, and that was about a 14% move. So as you can see, these things typically, you know, there, there, there's no like general rule of like it has to get to exactly this amount. I just want to show that it does hold some clout in this market when it actually is confirmed. Before and sorry, and I should also say before this one here, there hadn't been, you know, it, it was golden cross the whole way up essentially from like 3,000 to to 20,000, you know? Um, so again, very rarely do you get fake outs on this. And I, I mean, there is one example right here, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. You do have one example of it, but this one ended up, this one ended up, yes, it did death cross for a second. It just golden cross for a second right here. You know, it's, it's obviously different posturing. When I see price action bunched up like this and using the cross as support and then buoyed up off of it, that's typically how I want to see my crosses operate. Um, that's how, that's how I like my crosses, bro. 
So again, um, uh, as soon as I saw that when I woke up in the morning, I, I actually took a little bit, a very small long, my position sizing to, to, to put in perspective during the whole bear market is about 50% of what it is during a bull market. And during this phase right now, it's probably like 25% of, of, of what it would have been, you know, a year ago, year and a half ago. And that's not, and that's only due because I don't see, there's not it. <sighs> There's not a huge upside of risking your whole account right now or, 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 or whatever your regular amount is, at least in my opinion. The reason why is because typically speaking, marks are going to be <laughs> over a longer period of time. They're going to be bullish more often. They're going to be bearish, which, again, going back to the discussion of, you know, being in the gangs, right? It's like, OK, well, you can be in the gang, but at some point in time, your gang's going to fucking lose the turf war. I mean, it's 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 going to happen. You Things don't go up for forever and they don't go down for forever. They typically go down less for forever than they go up, if that makes sense. What I'm trying to say is that things over a longer period of time, things are, you know, uh, the more time will be spent going up than down uh, on an asset that is not, you know, do, does not have like legitimate technical issues. Obviously, this this is excludes things that are, you know, legitimately fucked um, from a higher level perspective. Now, I'm going to throw on the uh, all, all of my drooling tools. And actually, this has not only taken out the horizontal that we've been looking at, but also the more preliminary downtrend resistance line that have been going all the way back here from late or, or mid to late November. So again, uh, on decent volume as well, uh, not crazy, uh, certainly not crazy volume, but decent, decent. Um, so to me, this is still likely consolidation. I don't believe that the lows are anything or, or anything like that, but I do believe that the short term direction is up. Um, now, to put in perspective, actually, before we get on a little bit further, I do want to show, just show what like a 10 percent, you know, on average, we were getting like 10 to 20 percent um, off the lows after a golden cross. And this, you know, this was about an 8 percent, 10 percent right here. Right, and sorry, that was 38.50. This is 4000. You know, once you start getting to like 20 percent, which I, I think that this is a lot less likely. Um, but now you're talking like into the into the low 4000s, you know, 42, 43, 4400 ish area. I think that's a lot less likely, though. Um, I am not really looking for that. I do want to be aware of this resistance right here at 3830 and this resistance right here at 3950, 4000 ish area. That does line up with a couple of fibs. We got the 0.5 or sorry, the, the, the 382. And then we also got the 236, um, respectively speaking. So again, um, anywhere around those areas, I am looking for, you know, I will be and I, I don't want to be holding longs for long in a market like this. And at the same point in time, the next time that we get death cross in the four hour dollar time frame is the next time that I put on a probably more legitimate position. Um, because even, you know, my longs in a bear market are going to be even half of what my of, of, of what a of what a real position size to the downside would be, you know, in in, in a bear market, you know, for a short trade, essentially, is, is what I'm saying. Jesus Christ, really struggling with my words. Like I said, not enough sleep last night, unfortunately. I did buy these new gamer glasses, though, and they're really awesome. They get rid of, like, all of the uh, all of the blue light, and so it feels like a, it feels like my eyes aren't being pulled out of my face right now. Um, I'm, not, I'm obviously not wearing them right now, but all, at all other hours of the day, it's really great. It makes you look uh, fucking amazing. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyways, these lower time frames over here, four hour uh, stokes, I believe, are snaking around. Yeah, they did just they did just reject um, going into the bearish control zone and and uh, crossing up. Do like that uh, twelve hour twelve. You know, yes, yes. For the last, um, you know, for the last week, I was saying, hey, we did find resistance along this area on the twelve hour stokes, which has been going in our lower highs. And we did turn down off that, but now when the Stokes come all the way down to test the edge of the bearish control zone, reject it, and then cross back up, you know, I still do have this trend line in here, and I still do want to be cognizant of, of, of if and when Bitcoin does get back around there. And if it does turn around there, that would be incredibly interesting and probably, probably worth taking a position. But this is, you know... Understand that um, if this does break, then that's probably going to be confluent with you know the four thousand level break. Not imagine now. Of course, it's it's very difficult to like gauge these with price action because you know it's it's very it's it's obviously very beholden to what actually price action is doing at that specific moment in time. And you know uh, you know a hundred dollar move out of nowhere is going to really 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 really. Uh, change the settings on those but um, but for now that's kind of what would be my initial you know thought process on that. 
Um, same thing with daily. I believe daily did just cross back up to the upside as well. Daily is a little bit different. We have the same sort of trend line going all the way back to September. Remember September being <laughs> uh, September being the last time that we actually had a golden cross in the four hour dollar time frame. And looking at this guy right now, I'm sorry, going back on over to the Stokes, bring him up. Um, you know, I, I'd imagine that if this thing does get going any any little bit, it's going to break this trend line. It's it's no longer going to exist. exist. Um, in fact, I could even I could even argue that I don't even think really tested it uh, last time either. Perhaps that's not even the right way to be looking at it. I think I feel a little bit more comfortable with the 12 hour. I do feel a lot more comfortable with the 12 hour with the way that that one's actually situated right now. Uh, RSI taking out the high of the prior high and also taking out this this resistance that we are looking at at the 50 at the kind of like the neutral zone 50 to 60 mark right here that it had been beholden below, you know, for the last uh I mean, going all the way back over here to late 2018. Um, so that so 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 that does hold some clout. I'm sure that people are talking about an inverted head and shoulders right here. Um, does that work? Is that right? I I don't. Hmm. Is this an inverted head and shoulders? Well, let's just, let's let's play around with the measure move. If, if it is going to be one, let's just figure it out. What what is it going to look like? Probably you're gonna, your neckline's probably right around here. I'd imagine we don't we wouldn't have if this is an inverted head and shoulders. It it, it would not have been confirmed broken to the upside just yet, just by the way. Uh, Mesh move would be pointing all the way to the daily 89 exponential, which also does meet up with this horizontal right here, which also does meet up with the 236 Fibonacci retracement. So I do like that for really good confluence between all these three things. Uh, also would be creating another lower high. And where would that also be? That'd also be right at the edge of the weekly 200 exponential, which to me is very important because now I do believe that Bitcoin has broken the the smaller descending triangle to the, up, uh, to the upside, or at least that's what it looks like to me, I do believe that we probably will see follow through on this. Um, I don't, I, you know, personally, I, I've been saying this for the last week as well. If, you know, if that were to happen, I, I, yes, there is resistance along the way, but I, my, my opinion is that you probably, probably do make a stab towards this 200 exponential. This has been governed in our lower highs or just basically our highs in general ever since Bitcoin got in this area. And as long as Bitcoin is below it, I am overall, you know, have no real reason to believe that the lows are anything or anything like that. But of course, you know, you can have your rallies in your bear market, just like you have your dumps in your bull market. Nothing is, you know, nothing goes in a straight fucking line. Um, but uh, but as long as we're both opening and closing weekly deals below this 200 exponential, this purple moving average again, 4100, uh, nothing's really changed from a higher time frame perspective. Which again, when we're talking about three months of price action in this, you know, in this in this period right here. Um, I want to be looking at the higher time frame. Speaking of the higher time frames, I also do want to remind myself that the monthly, the monthly green 55 exponential, which we broke for the first time in Bitcoin's history yesterday, or um, sorry, last month. Let's go to an updated chart. Uh, we are actually right at it right now. It's technically 3674. Uh, now remember, this is done on a monthly basis. So whatever Bitcoin does intra month is kind of irrelevant. It only matters where it closes. And if we do close below, then that will be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly bearish to me. Um, but that also means that we can, in the you know, in the next 10 days, uh, rally all the way up and then, you know, still end below. And that, that would be completely fine. It wouldn't change around anything in the higher time frame picture. Also, of course, though, if the monthly does close above the green 55 exponential, then we have something new to consider. Then we have something new, new to consider because when talking about breaking exponentials, um, especially on higher time frames, I want to see both an open and close below these things. What we have right here is we have our last month closing below it for the first time in history. If this month were to close above, then that would be a rejection of that and look a little bit more of a hunt. And we probably have a more of a prolonged uh, bounce up. Now, I think that this is less likely to happen. I think that the monthly probably does end below that area. But remember this, you know, we can spend some time. Uh, we can certainly spend some time around this, uh, you know, uh, uh, above that 3680-ish area. Uh, no doubt about that. Again, as these two moving averages, the red and the and the and the yellow, uh, converge on each other, that you know, and and if Bitcoin does end below here or or even around here, um, uh, by end of month, then that's going to start to present a very 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 big problem. But anyways, lower time frames to focus back on these guys. You know, they do. It does look like they want to at least give them another try up uh, up, up here. As long as and more importantly speaking, I should say this: as long as Bitcoin's above this thirty six fifty area, that is my that is kind of like my short term bias that the uh, uh, that uh, that we're going to be testing up higher and probably somewhere you know I I think 30 3850 is probably very likely uh, 39 
3950 to 4000 is kind of my more personal opinion but again i don't trade my opinion i trade technical analysis do have decent volume on the four hour again this is kind of weekend bullshit so it's not too impressive um you could also call this a bull i mean this is a very ugly bull flag over here I don't think too many people would call this a bull flag, but I'm curious. It's probably it's gonna have the same fucking measure move. I mean, it's the same, basically the same fucking thing, man. Um, and where, where would that be pointing towards? That uh, that actually be pointing towards this more preliminary one at 3830. So again, remember 3830 also is of great importance because it if we do go back here to um, late December, early January, this was a nice symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin had been working on. And that when that broke to the downside, we did get this mesh move, which is actually still, which is, or sorry, which which is actually still, um, what's it called, uh, active, I suppose, or or relevant or or valid as long as we are below the breakdown point of this symmetrical triangle, which is right around that thirty-eight thirty level. So. If, if, with the measure move pointed right here, more preliminary speaking, and also we do have a nice horizontal trend line. And also, you know, just with that in mind as well, could that be an area of interest? Yeah, and I will be trying out to trade there, even though my opinion is different. My opinion is actually different, um, but I will try to trade there just because that's, you know, that's the way that I fucking trade, man. Um, and that'll that'll also be, you know, just again, going off of the four hour dildo golden cross, you know, technically speaking, that would be an 8% move, which is kind of what we had on the last one. Again, doesn't need to be exactly like that. That's not, I don't want to make it sound like it's super scientific like that. It's not. It's not, to be very, very clear. It's not. Um, but it is worth mentioning. So, yeah, let's go check out uh, CMEs. CMEs actually looking all right. Uh, long wick on this guy, so that is concerning. Uh, that is that is certainly concerning. And you actually have a little bit more of an obvious resistance right here, actually, where that last one stopped. But, of course, we did take it on the next four-hour dildo. Um, again, volume on this guy is pretty lackluster. It is a holiday in the U.S. USA today. It's like party in the USA. Um, four hour jewel will be setting up for something actually kind of nasty as well. So I would, you know, this one makes me think that that 3850, 30, 3900 is a little bit more likely or sorry, is, is, is a little bit more of a, of an impending resistance. So just be aware of these things. Uh, I should redraw this for the four hour dildo time frame. Let's get this guy out over here. There we go. Yeah, I still, still even took it out on this guy, even with a more lenient drawing of this. Um, now, of course, I should also denote this as well, because there's a lot of things coming around this area, this 3850 area, the more and more that I kind of draw it out. But basically, if I look at this, and again, you know, I had this as a as a descending triangle, um, which I, I I believe this was the right way to be doing it. But I know that there are going to be people who are drawing it something like this using the wicks, which I prefer bodies, not wicks, because they typically get rid of the noise. But if I were to use wicks, the resistance would actually be coming in again around that thirty eight fifty level. So again, it, you know, is what's more likely? I. I, I would still be representing it the other way. I don't think that that's the right way to be really be doing it, but there probably are, you know, just takes one person to fucking sell that area, right? Um, anyway, speaking of, let's get on to the longs and shorts because there's been a lot of clout talking about this. And, and one of the things that I saw in the Discord was um, where people were talking about how um, people were talking about how when I talk about big volume metrics on during this time of the market cycle, because Bitcoin costs less, you should be able to put on more shorts and longs. But that shows a very gross misunderstanding of how these work. Understand, these are margin positions. They're only representing the margin coins, which the margin coin supply is pretty consistent. That's why it doesn't change all that much. When we're talking about historical volume, though, and probably in the counterpoint, that's probably going to come up as well. Crown, well, what? Well, why don't you? Why? You talk about it. You, you talk about the volume on the current load not being good enough. Well, yeah, because this is just margin. This is just margin coins, not all the coins. <laughs> Understand that margin, margin coins, and th this is going to get into a, a tricky topic as well, but margin coins, this is just like coming from a funding pool on Finex. When we're talking about like actual coins being traded, uh, that could be, you know, from hodlers, that could be from people who just don't want to trade mar on margins, that could be from, you know, all different a myriad, myriad of sources, but basically a little bit more encompassing. So there's going to be a greater, a greater, it's, it's going to be more relevant to the overall supply. We're just looking at margin, overall margin available availability here. And the way that we know, and the way, and the way that we know that these statistics are still relevant is first, is first things first, actually more importantly, and oh my God, I can't believe I just forgot this. Understand it's about the fucking ratio. Jesus Christ. My God, man. Understand it's about the fucking ratio. 
<sighs> um, the ratio between longs and shorts because that offers up those hunting opportunities. That's what you're really seeing when you, you know, when, uh, when you have these big moves going either which way, of which we've seen plenty in the last, uh, well, in the last few hours. Um, but we have 37,000 open margin longs. Now, understand that even in December, remember December right over here, late December, when Bitcoin rallied all the way up to 4,200, 4,200, it actually had, we actually had less longs on the table. And even then, you know, it was still too many people on the bus mentality. Why? Why? Why did we get a pump in late, you know, in late December, basically coming off of, uh, or sorry, in mid-December, basically coming off of the, what, what was it, like 31.50 low? Well, there were a shit ton of shorts on the table, right? Shit ton of shorts all the way up to, you know, above 40,000. 40, I've never seen it that high. So there's a severe imbalance between the shorts and the longs, right? Severe imbalance between the shorts and the longs. And a lot of those shorts were not really in profit. Whereas right now, the longs that have been taken in the last, you know, in the last week, they were either, they were pretty much break even. And there was a few shorts at it, but actually, funnily enough, um, not too many shorts got liquidated on that last pump. About a thousand coins, you'd, uh, you'd expect more. You expect a lot more, so that is concerning as well. Um, but remember, it's it's about the ratio, and then when we're talking about margin statistics and just just margin statistics, it doesn't it doesn't come through the same frame of conversation as when we're talking about the whole the market at whole. There's only so many coins available for margin trading, it, you know, because people have to offer them up, right? It's it's you know it's, it comes from the margin funding pool. So that's why when we look at this, we can say, oh, it's relatively high or it's relatively low just by looking at the historical relevancy of this. And we know that over here, this was your late December rally, which fell apart. Remember the 4,200 high? Well, you know, price action obviously well into the, you know, or, or somewhere right around 4,000 a share. Yeah. Still nowhere, nowhere right around here, but the same sort of behavior happens. Why? Because it comes from the overall margin funding pool. Okay, so again, understand uh, understand these things because you know a lot of the times people will say stuff and it'll make sense. It'll make sense, but it <laughs> you just <laughs> you got to fucking dig a little bit deeper, man. There, there's a lot of people just spewing shit in this market that you know I'm, I'm sure most people are just trying to help, man. Most people are just trying to help. I don't I don't think that people are like deliberately misleading or anything like that. But at the same point in time, um, just because it sounds good, it's like all right. Just do a little bit of research into it, man. That's all you have to. That's all you got to do. But yeah, you see, you see this over here getting pretty damn high. This is also cr uh, uh, cause for caution on a rally like this. We are at thirty-seven thousand open longs. Historically speaking, you know this thing has got. I, I don't think I've seen it really maintain above forty thousand long um, for too long uh, in the past. And the second that it gets back down below this thirty-three thousand marker here, that's typically when the dump actually gains velocity um even though you might top out higher it's just this is telling me that as you know as soon as we get above here it's time to be a little bit more uh, cautious so yeah um i'd be i'd be very very quick with positions right now either which way also for sure it's same same thing you know as they are on the lower side i would be a little bit more leaning with these just because just because um they have shown you know naturally they're, they're typically lower or they find that they're they find their comfort lower so it's a little bit of a different um a little bit of a different scenario but the ratio still remains about you know 60 to 40 percent right or uh what would that be like two to three no it's not two to three it's i don't even fucking know man three to three to five something like that uh it's 40 40 percent uh 40 percent shorts 60 percent long is what i'm trying to say Okay, cool. Um, alrighty, so let's look at GBDC. It's not gonna be trading today, but uh, remember, GBDC closed Friday all the way here above the yellow twenty-one exponential. Yes, this the yes, this dildo is red, but when we saw this on Friday, that was also cause for concern. But I'm gonna imagine that GBDC is probably gonna be opening above this ascending triangle right here. And if GBDC does uh, does open above this area, that's gonna actually look a lot more convincing for Bitcoin, right? For 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 spot Bitcoin because this one's a much more obvious chart, just like. C CMEs, which which have already confirmed. Um, this one's a little bit more, a little bit well, a little bit less obvious because it's like, do you want to do it like this? You could do it like this. You could also you could also do Wix. I mean, it's like where where does it stop? So this is why I use horizontals because it kind of gets rid of all this noise, and I don't really want to be thinking about where this guy actually comes in. I would like to leave it and just kind of run with the assumption that we do have at the very least a very a, you know a short term breakout at the very least, and and I you know I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily looking like. 
I, I'm not trying to put on a short like right this fucking second to be very clear. Um, again, very, 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 very important for our dildo uh, golden cross to me. That is, you know, th- uh, th- uh, that is kind of like going to be the big news. Again, as long as we're above 3650, I'm going to be kind of running with that. As long as we're above, especially the yellow 21 exponential on this time frame, I'm going to be running with that. Um, and that is my main look on this guy. So, yeah. Um, what else do we have to look at? So, okay. So, um, Jesus, just keep on repeating yourself. I do want to remind myself, though, remember, if things do get around 4,000, critical area right there. Purple 200 exponential, that is that is the big deal as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that one and then the monthly, but the monthly, obviously, you know, it's going to take, well, a month. It's going to take another couple of weeks. So, I have to wait. have to wait that one out. But for now, um, now lower time frames, that's what kind of makes it difficult. Lower time frames don't necessarily want to be short off those. Okay, cool. Um, let's go check out the other market leaders. Let's go check out Mr. Beedroll. He led this rally to the upside. And I believe you actually notice that we have a lot of similarities between this last rally over here and this current one that we have going on right now. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically, Mr. Beedroll led this one to the upside uh, coming off the coming off the lows, you know, off Bitcoin's 200 simple moving average. And what was the catalyst for that? It was some sort of, you know, Constantinople, whatever the fuck, upgrade. It's like doesn't even, you know, it's a scheduled thing. It's one of those things like, all right, it's it's likely just going to be another, you know, another event. You got event psychology and uh, and that, you know, you, you know, how that typically goes with announcements, with, you know, earnings reports, with, you know, what's it called? Uh, uh, conference calls with um, with getting listed on exchange, you know, all, all these sorts of things. Uh, they're having an upgrade and that is cause for, you know, that, that is kind of the impetus for this next rally. Now, this does look like a legitimate breakout to me above this 127 line that we were looking at um, over the past uh, over over the past week or so. That was a big area that we were watching. It actually broke out before Mr. Bitcoin. Mr. Buterall taking the, taking the initiative on this, getting the four-hour total golden cross over here when price action was just in the low 120s and very, very powerful move up. Um, de- good, good volume on the buy up over here. I do like that. And uh, next resistance I do have is right around the 145 range. Um, man, this thing this thing didn't even stop. Well, I mean, I guess it did retest the 135 already. So powerful, powerful beta roll. Uh, Mr. Buttersworth's uh, really getting his, getting his revenge right now. Let's put a fib on this. I do believe that we're coming in somewhere right around there. Yeah, that's a 236. So remember, Bitcoin's 236 is like a sh- uh, like a hair under 4,000. Mr. Buterol is right around 145 to 148. I'd say uh, I kind of have it right here. Um, I suppose this would be the lower end. Uh, if you really want to get super specific, right around 150. Um, so yeah, and same thing for Mr. Buterol. Not really appropriate to be bearish or at least I wouldn't want to be bearish on this guy as long, especially as long as you're above 120, 126, 127, basically the breakout point. As long as we're above that breakout trend line, I, you know, it's, I mean, it's a fucking breakout by definition, right? Uh, by the same token, as far as like actual major, major lows, uh, to, uh, you know, speaking about those, um, don't really, ha- don't really have to talk about, I mean, you know, it's not really appropriate to be talking about, you know, putting in new lows or anything like that until we really get back below that, that 115, 120-ish area. That's when pressure goes back on once again. But as long as we're living above this breakout point, and even just a little bit below it as well, if you want to be more conservative, I don't, you know, it's... <laughs> it looks more powerful to me than not. So again, going back to the gang mentality, understand, you know, where your biases may be and understand that at some point in time, you know... It's probably gonna change. Probably gonna fucking change. So, let's go to let's go to Mrs. Litecoin over here and Mrs. Litecoin. Um, not not having as powerful of a rally as the others. Actually, uh, I think she kind of did most of her rallying in the past uh, in the past couple weeks over here. But uh, but hey, support taken out or sorry, resistance taken out at forty three fifty. Tested as support so far, holding as support. So as long as it is hovering above uh, forty three fifty, you know, overall good. What do we have on our oscillators? We got our four hour Stokes actually crossing down hinting at a lost momentum, but I don't necessarily like this. Um, yeah, I really needs to maintain this level. And it always feels like Mrs. Litecoin is just, she just, she's just destined to disappoint. Uh, by the same point, you know, uh, by, uh, by the same token, I wouldn't, I, it certainly is, is within the realm of possibilities to actually take a stab back towards the former highs uh, while the rest of the market is kind of, you know, on a more strong, uh, strong leg right now. Uh, let's go look at Mr. Monero. I do want to check out the other alts, the other top market cap alts. Uh, Mr. Monero uh, did not break out, did not break out, actually just grinding this resistance trend line. Huh, very interesting. So that is, 
a little bit of a warning signal. We want we want to see everything kind of moving in confluence with each other. Uh, what about Ripple? Uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples uh, breaking out. Okay, so good and actually getting a nope, not crossing over. Actually diverging. These moving averages are are diverging, are diverging right now. Ugh. Oh my god. These moving averages are diverging. There you go. All right, cool. Um, we do have a measure move off this symmetrical triangle that it actually did put in. And I'm curious, does that match up with that cyan 89? It does right around this area. You know, again, for Mr. Ripple's nipples, as long as you're below 34 and a half cents, not to, you know, nothing's changed from a macro perspective. But in the lower time frames here, uh, Technically speaking, I, I I wouldn't, you know, yeah, you do have resistance at 32 cents, but uh, 34 and a half cents, that's probably going to be the equivalent of Bitcoin being somewhere around that 4,000 level. Again, I'm making an assumption that actually does get there, but uh, but that's what I'd be looking for. And it is, it is you know, it is a good thing to be seeing these things moving together. Uh, Mr. Steller, uh, did you take a leg up? Man, so Mr. Steller, I was actually, uh, this is one of the ones I was looking at as likely to have a bounce or, or most likely to have a bounce. Uh, sometime last week, and it did, but it's certainly not as powerful. And actually, being beheld in by this 8.2 cent resistance, this this uh, 21 exponential right here. I mean, it has not. I mean, it, when everything else is kind of living well above it, this is not 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 a good thing for Mr. Stellar. Uh, if he does take a leg above it, then yeah, maybe we could have a little bit of a run, probably back to this uh, nine like low nine and a half cent region. Yes, you will have resistance right here at eight and a half cents, but. Let's let's check out what the daily stocks are doing. Daily stocks headed up, good. Daily RSI uh, still in the bearish control zone. Yeah, I I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, not a huge fan of this. Definitely a laggard. Definitely definitely uh, definitely one of the weakest. Definitely one of the weakest out of the uh, out of the top mark caps. Let's go look at uh, Bcash. How's Bcash doing? Uh, Bcash poking his head above uh, above the resistance right here. But do I have this right? Let's make this on a daily. Yeah, I would I would say that I would stand by that. Yeah. So it's still poking his head above. We'll be getting a decent cross over here. Man, this fucking logarithmic time scale is really really messing with my uh with my visuals right now. Um but yeah, uh, closing mm, do, did this take this area out no i would i would say it's not necessarily confirmed just yet looking a little bit definitely not as strong you don't see the same setup with your with your moving averages the rest of the market doesn't look as strong uh, let's look at mr neo uh neo neo chinese ethereum chinese buterol uh nowhere near and this one also i believe has an event or at least that's what's been passed on to me recently um it wouldn't take much to take to take a stab at like 9 9 20 9 30 but uh lagging lagging that's not a good sign that's not a good sign again look at the volume here just going from left to right this is all to be considered just some major consolidation as far as i'm concerned um just like just like everything else so i do like this good confluence between the, between these uh, what about zcash uh zcash mm, yeah not not too good either man not too good either something like this mm, no something like this and yeah uh it's it's def definitely definitely relatively weak i mean you really want to see everything moving together and they're not they're they're really not so uh we covered up all those did we cover up mr butyrol yes we did mrs litecoin we got her uh spy's not gonna be open today so don't need to talk about that but i'd be i wouldn't be bearish on that either um and then you got bitcoin back above 3700 right now so yeah I, again like i said when when you're in an overall bear market, taking longs is very difficult, or at least for me, it's very difficult. Again, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but um, when looking at something like this, I don't want to be short. I don't want to be short until I get the signal back to short. And as long as we're above 36.50, I don't really have any reason to short unless if in, unless we get to one of these targets first, which I will try probably a tr uh, at least a, a, at the very least a scalp around. Um, Again, I want to keep in the back of my mind, the big things to keep in the back of my mind are the monthly 55 and then the weekly 200 exponential. Those are the two big guys to be aware of. Obviously, the monthly coming in at the end of the month. And I'm just I'm just kind of repeating this because these are things that I actually do write down. And I do want to and I do want to be cognizant of, you know, in, in the actual timing away from these sorts of things. So you might um, you might find some value in that as well. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for now. Um, as far as, as as far as the weekly goes, understand that if Bitcoin actually does break above the 200 exponential right here, 4100. I would be looking at that point in time. There ain't nothing stopping it from the from the weekly 21 exponential, which is around 43 or sorry 4450, which would be the mesh move if you're looking at this whole thing 
as a as, as kind of like a pennant uh, formation, which uh, which broke out to the upside, which I would actually disagree with, or at least if it is, we don't have the volume confirmation on something like that. Anyways, the measure move would again, you know, just kind of show it out. It would actually meet up around that, you know, 4450, 4300 ish range right around here. Um, but with the volume catches that we're seeing so far now, yes, this is a daily digit start, so it's not too, you know, it's not too relevant, but even on the 12 hour, it's not too impressive. This is still within the overall context for that falling volume going from left to right. Uh, so I don't, I, I, I think that this, this rally is probably going to get sold into at some point, And I don't think it gets past that 4,100 level. That's what I feel pretty comfortable with saying. If it does, then we got something completely new to consider and, uh, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it if it gets there. But for now, lower time frames. um, Looking fine to me. Looking fine until they're not. Again, 3650, the big area to be held, to be holding. I'll be back on later tonight uh, with some more live stream action. Hopefully, I can get some sleep before then, man, because my eyes are like really bugging me. Anyways, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you on this lovely uh, Monday. Hope your Monday is going beautifully. Um, it is actually a nice, uh, kind of bright and sunny day in here in, here in Helsinki, Finland. A nice change of weather, actually, as well. Don't need to wear like full on fucking scarf suit. So. That's again, that's going to do it for today. I'll be back on later and I look forward to seeing you there and take care.